Hey y'all, let's look at uh, more on systems of equations. And uh, if you remember these from the last time we worked on them, which should have been your last lesson yesterday or a couple of days ago, um, because we keep doing this in Saxon over and over until you get it in your heads, um, what they do is they give you four equations. Your job is to look at most of the time the biggest equation, that one on the left in blue, and just take the other information in those th other three equations and just plop it in there until you can figure out, oh, I solved for one variable. And you take that one you know, number you get for the variable, then you uh, plug it in, you solve for the, all the rest of the variables. And let's, in 30 seconds, let's analyze these four equations, okay? This is a, a rate time distance problem is what this is. And uh, let's say you could have four equations and uh, somebody tells you, oh, the, uh, let's see, the elephant ran, no, yeah, the, yeah, let's say the elephant ran, that's an E, ran at 200 miles per hour, okay? The water buffalo, W, ran 250 miles an hour. These are large, fast animals, as anybody can tell you. Uh, they live in the Antarctic area, I believe. Anyhow, the time of the elephant and the time of the water buffalo together, they'll have a, they'll have a sentence in there that says something like, the elephant and the water buffalo ran a total of nine hours. Okay, which again, doesn't mean one, they both ran four and a half. They could run six and three, seven, two, whatever, okay? Remember what rate times time is? In other words, if you run 50 miles an hour for two hours, you run 100 miles, right? So rate times time is distance. So they will say the distance of the elephant was the same distance of the water buffalo. And that'll be your four equations. Eventually, what you're gonna do is instead of seeing these four equations just written like this, eventually you're gonna see these in a small little paragraph. Um, the elephant ran just at the exact same distance as the water buffalo. The elephant's speed was 200 miles an hour. The water buffalo's speed was 250 miles an hour. And together, the elephant and the water buffalo ran a total of nine hours. What were their, you know, what was the time of the elephant and what was the time of the water buffalo? Okay, and you just plop it in here. Your responsibility at some point in the future will be to come up with these four equations when they tell you that in English, English words. Okay, well, let's find T sub E and T sub W. Well, I mean, what you got to do is take this big fat equation and just start shoving stuff in there, all right? Well, if you have the rate of the elephant, well, there it is right there. So I'm just going to write this, 200. The time of the elephant, I don't know. I don't see it. I mean, I see kind of this right here, but let's just leave it, time of the elephant, all right? Equals the rate of the water buffalo, oh, that's 250 and times the time of the water buffalo. Now, if I write T sub W, I can't solve this equation because in, in the one equation, I'll have two variables, a T sub E and a T sub W. Can't do it. So what you're gonna have to do is make this into a T sub E because that's the only way you can solve this equation if you have one variable in it. So we're gonna have to make an equation where we, we take T sub W and split it out. Well, you know right here, there's the fourth equation we're gonna use. If you wanna get to time of the water buffalo by itself, you're gonna to have to get rid of that thing and stick it over there. So if you do that, you're gonna have this equation, nine minus the time of the elephant. If you have that, then that's where you can stick it in there, right there. Because the time of the water buffalo, you can put right there and go, that's gonna be nine minus the time of the ele elephant. And look at that equation. Can you solve that equation now? I'll give you a hint. Got it yet? Okay, the answer is yeb or yes. Okay, yeah, you can. There's one variable, you can do it. This is just like solving an equation that has only x's, you can do those. Okay, so this is where you get at your, you know, thinking cap or your calculator or whatever. 250 times nine was 2250. 250 times negative t sub e is negative 250 t sub e. This gets mashed over there it turns into 450 time of the elephant equals 2250, okay? Well, if you do the arithmetic, you will find that the time of the elephant is that divided by 450, which is five, okay? If the elephant runs for five hours and they ran for nine hours total, obviously the water buffalo ran for four hours. And there you go, okay? They give you always enough information to solve these things, okay? Let's try another one. Copy this down, pause it if you need to. 
Okay, well, uh, we have four equations, we always do on these, and eventually, again, you'll be required to take a paragraph and you make up your own four equations out of the paragraph, which will be easier than you think it'll be when, it, when the time comes, okay? So let's uh, translate this. You got, uh, I don't know, vehicle one and vehicle two, let's say. And the rate times the time is also called distance, okay? So the distance of the first car plus the distance of the second car was 360 miles. They might say, the two cars together uh, traveled for 360 miles, all right? The first car went 30 miles an hour. The second car went 40 miles an hour. And together, the two cars, you know, dr drove for 10 hours. What was the time of the first car? What was the time of the second car? And again, here's our equation we're gonna use. We're gonna rewrite this thing and chuck in there all this other information to make it solvable, okay? So the rate sub one is 30, so we're just gonna put 30. The time of the first one, it isn't by itself. We'll just keep it there, all right? Plus, the rate of the second one was 40. And of course, I'm just doing that. I'm just copying that back. The time of the second one, again, we don't want to have an equation where we have a T sub 2, because then we have two different variables in one equation. We can't solve that. So we're going to have to rewrite T sub 2 somehow. So let's look at this equation over here. Let's get this by itself, which means this is going to have to go on that side. So the time of the second one is gonna be 10 minus the time of the first one. That is what we're gonna put right here. 10 minus the time of the first one. Now look, you've got a T sub one and a T sub one. That's all you got, you can solve it now. So let's do it. 30 times the time of the first car, plus 40 times 10 is 400. Uh, plus 40 times negative T is being negative 40 T sub one. Oops, wait a second. Oh, I forgot to put equals 360. Uh, that, that needs to go there. Okay, so that also equals 360. Okay. All right, well, that's um, 30 of something minus 40 of something is negative 10 of something. And let's move this over here. 360 minus 400 is negative 40. So negative 10 times what gives you negative 40? Well, the answer, of course, is 4. Okay. Rarely are you going to get something where they go, hey, I got the time. The time of the first car is negative 8. How do you go negative 8? Uh, hours, like back in time or something. No. Okay. All right. If the time of the first one was four, then since both of those equal 10, the time of the second one is six. You know what? 30 seconds. Let's just for the giggles of it, let's check this. They tell us that the total distance of both of these cars is 360 miles, right? Okay. Let's look at the first one. The first one goes 30 miles an hour, right? If you go 30 miles an hour and you go four hours, how far do you go? 30 times four is what? Okay, 120 miles, right? Okay. The second one goes 40 miles an hour and it goes for six hours. Well, 40 times six is what? 240, right? That adds up to 360, which proves we are right. We got it, okay. All right, the second part of this, we're gonna test for functions. If you remember what a function is, it just means that if you plug, you know, it's like one of these deals where you go, oh, how much money am I gonna make babysitting? Oh, I get $2 per kid, and I get uh, $3 just for showing up, okay? The idea is if there's never going to be any question of how much money you make, let's say, if you plug in one value for X, in other words, how many kids, if you have five kids that show up, you're going to make two times five, 10 plus, three, you're gonna make $13. There's not a question of, oh, I could make $13 or I could make $17 or whatever. No, if you plug in a value for X, you get one value for Y, that is all. That's the definition of a function, okay? And at some point, somebody figured out, hey, if I draw a function, okay, in other words, let's, let's just graph this thing, right? We know how to graph this now, right? The three means we go one, two, three up and draw, that's our y uh, intercept. The fun, this uh, two over one, we could say is our, is our uh, slope, and that's gonna be going to the right, up, right? Because it's a positive. One, two, up, and one, two, over. One, two, up, one, two, over, and so on. At some point, somebody drew these things and went, I, I, I see something here. If I stick a vertical line right there, or right there, or right there, or right there, or wherever, I only cross this thing at one point. You see, each time if I put a perfectly vertical line, in other words, you can take your pencil if you want to, because there'll be drawings of these in your book. And you can tell if something is a function, 
that if you stick your pencil on top of it, 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 if, it if it only hits one point ever, and think <whistles> my pen went all the way up and down, and it only hit one point, that is a function. That sort of shows that it is a function. If it hits two things, in other words, let's say your line looks like, uh, I don't know, something like that or something. This is, this is similar. Now, this one here, you can look at this and go, oh, you can go all the way over if you want to. Forget this one for a second. You can go all the way over. Oh, I babysat 10 kids. How much money did I make? You would go up here. There would be one answer only, right? There wouldn't be two. But on this one, this is the number of kids you babysat, right? How much money do I make? Oh, I babysat, uh, I don't know, one, two, three, four. Oh, I babysat five kids. How much money do I make? Oh, one, two, three, uh, three and a half dollars. Oh, no, wait, wait a minute. There's one down here too. One, two, three. Oh, negative four dot. Uh, oh, wait, what's the answer? Oh, no. that's not a function. When you plug in an X, there's only one answer for why that's a function. This drawing does not represent a function because if you stick a pencil or vertical line, that thing hits it right there and it hits it right there. Well, heck, it hits it four places right there. That's ridiculous, okay? But anywhere over here, it's gonna be hitting it more than one place. One there, one there, if you kept going. One there, one there, and so on. That's what they call the vertical line test, okay? So if you see, look at this right here. Is this a function based on the vertical line test? Well, look at those dotted lines. They represent, you know, kind of vertical lines. And if you, if you look, every time you put a, you know, a vertical line on top of that uh, drawing, it only hits it in one spot at a time, right? So that's gonna be a function. In other words, you know, if you babysat kids, oh, I babysat one, two, three, four kids. Oh, I made this many dollars. If I babysat two kids, hey, I got charged money. I'm running out the back door. Uh, you know, there isn't two answers, it's just one. That's a function, okay? Is this a vertical, uh, is this, excuse me, is that drawing a function or not on the right? Is that circle a function? No, right? Because, you know, there's over here, this is, you know, if a vertical line hits it right there and it hits it right there. This is like saying to somebody, uh, I babysat two kids, how much money did I get? One person goes, oh, you got $2. The other person says, oh, you got negative $2. Well, there should be only one answer. Ain't no function, as they say. Okay, all right. Is this a function based on the vertical line test? No, right? Okay, in other words, you put a vertical line, Hey, I babysat one kid. How much money do I make? Uh, one dollar? Uh, six dollars? Uh, negative twelve dollar? Or whatever that is? No. All right. Is that a function? That's kind of funky looking, but okay. I mean, you could try it here, here, here. It doesn't look like any any one of those vertical lines passes in more than one uh, on on more than one point. So that is a function. Okay. This one is that a function or no? No, right? I mean, you can draw a vertical line practically anywhere except for this point right there and go, it hits it in more than one point. So there we go. Okay, uh, practice. Pause it and try A. Okay, if you plopped all the stuff in there, the time of the first vehicle is 40, the time of the second is 20. Okay, try B. Pause it and try B. Okay, same thing here. And uh, it's one and negative two. I'm not sure how you can do a rate of negative two. <laughs> Going back in time, I guess, or whatever. So, all right, pause it and try C. Yes, that is a function. You can put your line on there anywhere you want, the vertical line, it only hits it at one point. Okay, try D, is D a function? No, you can see that if you put your vertical line on there, it will, it will be just one place. All right, try E and that'll do us. Pause it. Okay, yeah, E is a function. It does, it looks like it comes close there, but it is a function. If you lay a vertical line there somewhere, it only hits at one point, so, okay. All right, see y'all next time. Have a good day.